Welcome everyone. Harrison Assessments is proud to sponsor our session today. And it gives me pleasure to introduce Dr. Bob Nelson. Dr. Nelson is considered the leading advocate for employee recognition and engagement worldwide. He has worked with 80% of the Fortune 500 and presented on six continents. He's been featured extensively in the national and international media, including the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, CNN, CBS 60 Minutes, MSNBC, ABC, PBS, and NPR about how best to motivate today's employees. Dr. Bob has sold over 5 million books, including 15 and one ways to reward employees, 1,001 rewards and recognition field book, 1,001 ways to energize employees, the management Bible, <laughs> recognizing and engaging employees for dummies, and his latest book, 1,001 ways to engage employees. Please help me welcome the guru of thank you, Dr. Bob Nelson. Thank you so much, Tracy and Sylvia. It's a pleasure being with you today, and it's my first time ever presenting for HR.com, so thank you, HR.com, as well. These are just a few of the companies I've worked with in my career on the topic of uh, getting the best out of employees, basically, um, rewarding, engaging them, and uh, it's been a, a fun ride. I've been doing this for 25 years. I love every day of it, uh, and I'm, I'm glad, delighted to be here presenting with you today. And and thank you, Harrison Assessments, for sponsoring this. Uh, so let's get right to it. We've got a lot to go over. Uh, managing virtual workers today, we're going to cover at least seven seven ways to do this better. Um, it's it's something that, uh, you know, I used to do, I've been doing this presentation for for a couple of years. I used to do a big buildup on, on it's coming, we're going to be doing it, people want it, here's why you need it, blah, blah, blah. And all, now all of that is, is gone because we're all doing it for the last year. We're all working virtually or or the, the majority of white collar workers are at least and so now it's a function of how can we get uh, more out of it uh, uh, virtual work is is basically defined by a working family um, that um, is when individuals work from home on the road otherwise outside of traditional centralized offices virtual team is one that conducts its work almost entirely through electronic technology uh, so just so we're on the same page give you an example of this i've worked with hp for years and um, you know, and you might have the same experience where you you're talking to someone, and uh, I spend a lot of time on the phone talking to people. A lot of times, I yeah forget where they're located or don't even consider that. Uh, and and uh, it's one day I, I asked my HP contact uh, where they were located, and I assumed they were in Sunnyville, California, where HP's headquartered. And and once you know they they were in Miami, and and now they're now they live in uh, San Antonio. And we got talking on this topic, and, and uh, she said, you know, I've worked for HP for 18 years. I've had five different bosses. I've never met any of them in person. And wow, it's, it's, that's, they are where we all are now, that this is where, where it's happening. That, that, uh, uh, and you've got to work effectively with someone, you've got to go through all the same steps as you had to do before. You just are not going to be able to do it face to face. And so when they have a... When they have a, a problem to address, they don't they don't see who's available down the hallway or in the building. They say who's available in their network around the globe to bring the best bearing to the problem. And and they'll go through all the stages of effective teams uh, and orientation and and uh, roles and and process and celebration of results. They just won't do any of it face to face. So uh, and and they're very astute at it. So we we all need to be astute at this now and. And that's what we're going to focus on. I'm, I'm convinced that work's becoming a state of mind more than a place to be. And that state of mind uh, can be impacted. Uh, it needs to be impacted uh, because work, workers with the proper state of mind, where they feel supported, where they feel connected, where they feel uh, as an ambassador of the organization, they can work anywhere and get great results. And it's, it's up to organizations and managers specifically to nurture that proper state of mind so they have that connection. In, in um, the pandemic, in the short term at least, uh, the, the pandemic was a boon to employee engagement. Why? Because managers, they, they had to reach out to employees because they weren't you know, in the office. 
to see, hey, how's it going? Did anything you need? All the stuff we know that, that they should have been doing, but now they had to do it. And the, the short term result of that is that employees feel, felt very supported and, and uh, it, had, it was a huge boon to employee engagement. Now that's kind of worn off, you know, because the, the fun of uh, working from home is, uh, you know, this is uh, kind of gotten a little bit thin with uh, the monotony. And if you've got kids, you're, you're juggling education and, and, you know, no new change of scenery, et cetera, et cetera. And so now we've got different issues that we're, we're dealing with but it's still all very doable um, uh, from a distance. This is, these are the main things that I wanna cover here, at managing virtual workers today, um, the importance of clear goals and expectations, uh, trust with accountability, extraordinary communication, inclusion and collaboration. And then I can't talk about anything without talking about uh, virtual recognition and rewards. Recognition rewards drives all, all behavior. Reckon it, you get what you reward. And so we, we got to touch on how do you do this in virtual format? Uh, and then uh, time, time uh, allowing, we're going to bring uh, Tracy uh, to the conversation and, and talk about how, how the, the Harrison assessment is a, is a very key way to find out more about what people need, again, even without talking to them face to face to have an insight into them that maybe they didn't have of themselves and to leverage that knowledge in a more effective working relationship. So off we go. My, my, uh, one of my case studies, you know, you have to, you have to look wherever you, you, you can get uh, guidance. And, and uh, I, I went all the way to my wife. <laughs> this is my lovely wife, Jennifer. Uh, she's a senior UI engineer for Axiom in Austin. Now I live, now we live in San Diego. I remember in, uh, when she got this job, she goes, Hey, they, they they invite us to come, you know, live in San Diego and say, when you move to, Bobby, you want to move to San Diego I go, or to, to Austin? I go, well, Austin's a great town, uh, but uh, we're in San Diego. It's hard to beat that, you know? <laughs> and, and so, no, no, we're not moving to Austin. So she told them uh, that and they said, no problem. We'll just have you work from at the distance. And so she's she's one of 10, 10 members on a a uh, software development team, uh, three of them. One of them works in Mexico. One of them, I think, is in the Philippines. Uh, and um, that's just the, the reality. And um, and they make it work very, very well. Uh, they uh, She can and she does work from anywhere. In fact, it's kind of interesting because when she this is the first job she had as a virtual employee. And she, you know, for the last 20 years, we always kind of grope with, uh, you know, vacations and, you know, we never... Um, she she has like two weeks. I have as much as I want because I got my own business, and uh, we never had time for doing anything because those two weeks we used when kids were sick or or, or had to take her mom to to uh, the doctor or whatnot. So we came to vacation, didn't happen. And she took this job and she she immediately said, "Hey, you know we can we could go do vacations. I could I could work from wherever." And and we almost immediately for it was like her birthday and. Uh, she'd always wanted to see the Northern Lights, so we booked a trip to Iceland. And while we were there, she didn't miss a meeting with her team. And uh, she'd get up early and, and uh, make that, and then we'd go have fun and explore. It was just fabulous. It was just fabulous. And, and we've done more of that since then. So it's, there's a lot of new, it's a whole new world <laughs> as you make this work for you. And we're gonna, we're gonna Jennifer, uh, I'm gonna come back to her because she's gonna, she, I've learned a lot in, in uh, through her in managing uh, virtual workers and, and she's gonna be kind of our, our avatar for uh, this topic. So uh, the first, first point is clear goals and expectations. This is true of any work. You know, you've gotta, you gotta make it clear what you want from people in order to get that. You start with fuzzy goals, you get fuzzy results and they probably won't be the ones that you were hoping for. So uh, all performance starts with clear goals and expectations. And so uh, this is certainly true uh, with virtual workers that, that um, we know the best goals are few in number, specific and focused. You can't focus on everything. And so part of the job of a, of a leader is to be streamlining. Where do we need to all be putting our, our attention? Uh, the best goals are stretch goals. They're not too easy. They're not too hard. They're uh, a lot of research on this that roughly about you got a 70% chance of achieving the goal. That's kind of the ideal you want to shoot for. If it's if it's too easy, it doesn't change how people address things. If the goal is too hard, 
it also doesn't affect their 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 motivation because why you know I don't think I'm going to be able to do it so I don't do anything. So for example, uh, you know a lot of companies have sales goals and the, the top salesperson you know gets a trip to Hawaii and stuff like that and everyone else doesn't get anything and and so if you're a salesperson and maybe you're new and and Gary got uh, top salesperson first quarter second quarter and he's probably going to get it third quarter too. I'm not going to do anything different you know and so and so it doesn't help us. And instead you want to make it maybe set the goal so. It, whoever improves 20%, uh, they, they share in the reward. Maybe it's not going to Hawaii, but maybe it's having a, a group celebration. Maybe it's giving them some, some, some ways to recognize people that help them make their goal, you know, to, to, to get into getting everyone on the team into it. We, we know the, uh, the best goals today are collaborative. They're not, they're, um, the days of just telling people what to do are over. And so one of the things you want to avoid in, in working from virtually, because it's very easy just to kind of give commands and just to, to email people with assignments and, and stuff like that. That's not managing. That's abdicating. You can't just dump work on people and walk away. And then if it doesn't get done, it's, you know, it's your fault. That's, that, that's going to be a sour relationship almost immediately out of the shoot. So you got to be, you got to be on people's side. You got to show they're on their, their side. And it starts with getting to know them. And it starts with uh, having a discussion. And it starts with having uh, them uh, setting goals together and getting buy-in from them. Because as, as you can get them into uh, buying into the goal, it's more likely to achieve and be, and be successful. And then your role is to help them achieve the goal. Uh, Peter Drucker, who, who uh, I worked with, with my, on my PhD, uh, defined management as getting work done through others. It's not being a super worker, doing it all on your own. It's not, uh, you know, command and control. That that went out out in the 1940s. It's it's being getting the, helping people get the job done, being there for them. And the better that you can understand them, and who they are, and where they're coming from, and what they're capable of, and and treat them as a partner in the discussion of what we're trying to get done together, the more successful you're going to be. Uh, so more more on that later. So how do, how do you do that in the virtual environment? Again, our avatar, uh, uh, Jennifer, uh, what they do uh, in setting the work structure rules and expectations from the get-go is, is they have a master plan for project work. This is very common in software, by the way. Um, they do uh, they divide it into two-week two sprints. So two, we, we could have a two-week chunk of work we're going to achheve as a group. Uh, they they uh, they're working. There's some guidelines for work conditions. They work around core hours. That means um, that everyone is available from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Some people are morning people. Some people are are afternoon people or e evening people. But we're all available during this time. And and so um, and then they and then even knowing that, it's everyone's job to inform the group when they're not available. They're at a dentist appointment. They've got their their kids sick, whatever it might be. These are these are the the rules we're going to operate on. And in this company that she's working with, if someone, for example, they have uh, they have a they have a, well, let me come back back to that. They have a how they how they do this moving forward. Uh, so trust and accountability is is a key point and uh, a very key point in in having successful virtual teams. Um, in uh, the, the book, The Virtual Manager, which you each are going to get a copy of for being part of this, they, uh, the comments made the overwhelming majority of managers have an inherent belief that they can't manage what they can't see. This is what we're fighting. We're fighting those people that are uncomfortable with, we've always uh, done it this way, where you know I, the team's right here, I can look out and see them, I can go talk to Joe or, or Sally if there's a problem, and, and now, oh man, they're all over the place, I don't know if I can handle this. And, and we got to help managers be able to handle it uh, because uh, it's not going away. We're going to double down. And, and as you get better at this, your ability to expand, to attract talent exceeds, your ability to uh, achieve results expands. And so, uh, again, we, we've got to help uh, managers and, and employees um, you know, make, make this uh, relationship work. Uh, so what we know from research, um, that Cisco did on leadership traits for for best managing virtual workers is that they the best the best managers for virtual work are naturally proactive. Um, they are good, excellent at communication skills, and they're comfortable with some degree of ambiguity. So these are keys to look at when you when you put managers into a role of managing uh, virtual people um, because it's, it'll make it a little bit easier. 
And um, once you know, 60% of senior executives say earning trust is a major challenge for virtual team leaders. So uh, we're going to talk about how do you how do you earn that that type of trust? It takes four times longer to build trust in a virtual environment, four times longer. Uh, so we got to double down on on making that happen. How I, I always think of uh, I can remember old enough to remember when Ronald Reagan was the president. He used to talk about trust, but verify. We're going to trust on nuclear weapons. We're going to trust others, but we're going to have a, a means for, to verify each other that we're doing what we said we would to kind of keep us all honest. And, and we're going to do that above board. And, and that was a successful policy. And I think it, it, it's uh, relevant in the workplace today. So now back to, uh, I gave the big structure for, for, for doing the, the, the group work. How do they do it on an ongoing basis? They, they, use, they call them stand-up meetings. They do them every morning. Some groups uh, in other environments, and what might call this a huddle, uh, in I know manufacturing environments sometimes do that, or in hospitality, they might have a pre, a pre uh, um, staff meeting before the pre-shift meeting where they where they do some things. Uh, it's one of those variations that we have a have a, a check-in point, and in and with her group of ten people, they have a 15-minute meeting every morning, that at the same time where they all all do just. Uh, a simple check-in. They very simply they everyone reports out what they did yesterday, what they got done, what they're planning to get done today, and potential obstacles, problems they have. And and after they do that, 15 minutes, they it'll say, "Well, Eric, it sounds like you got the you got the biggest challenge today. If you need any help, you know, reach out to me or any anyone because we're a team and we're gonna be as 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 strong as our weakest link. And and you have the the, the heaviest task today. That's that's critical to our success. So as need be, we all want to help you achieve that. Um, and so there's a, a give and take and, and we're in it together. Uh, so this is, this is important. And, and I, I started to say this before that, that they have uh, in their process, if anyone misses a stand-up meeting, they're fired. Accountability is very strict because if, if we can't hold to the way that we agreed to work together, it's not going to work. So if, so if someone just misses this meeting that we're all committed to that launches our, our successful work and they don't and, you know now maybe if it's, an, if it's a family emergency once that we'll, we'll live off but if they just oh they forgot the next day or you know it's not sorry and and they let them go because uh they're obviously not not uh ready for prime time yet in the virtual environment so uh what i'm saying is that uh virtual work there, there's uh, for some people there's a natural tendency to kind of goof off. You know, I had I had a virtual employee that I remember another employee told me that every time that they they talk they talk to that person, they were shopping at Costco. <laughs> it's like, well, it's okay to shop at Costco and maybe even okay to do that during working hours. But uh, gosh, you know, if 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 it's like party time and and maybe I'll I'll get some work in. It's not going to work out, you know. And so you, you got to have strict expectations, and you got to hold people strictly accountable uh, in order to to make this uh, work. Because work working virtually is is uh, is not a right; it's a privilege. And so people have to own up to the privilege to do it. Um, and and especially now, this has to be even, even more strict going because we're all dependent on it. Uh, communication is always important in, in management. It's exceptionally important in virtual because that's all we got to work with is conversations. <laughs> so uh, you, you got to double down. And uh, in, in research I've done, uh, when, when I looked at 52 explicit behaviors uh, with employees as to what was the most important to them for getting their job done. And darn if the, the top one, 95% of employees reported was uh, good communication, direct, honest um, uh, access to my my management or other people that I need to get the job done. And and funny because about the same time there's a, another study that was done of executives by account temps, and they found that that executives reported 48% said communication is the top most important thing to to help them get the job done. And so uh, it's good that they both employees and executives realize that's top on the list, but there's still a gap as you can see here. <laughs> We've got to. We have to align with as important as employees feel it is, because they're the ones that, that need access. They need the, their manager to be there when they have a question, because they're going to put things on hold until they can 
get a go ahead on what they're working on, whatever it might be. So you want to have this 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 communication that is there to the, in the time of need when a person has it. A question, if they have a question. If you take uh, two days to get back to them, you're, you're going to hold them not only hold them up, but you're also sending them a message that, eh, your work maybe isn't that important to the team. You know, <laughs> you're not that important to the team, and and pretty soon they're going to start feeling that, and they're not going to be as committed as they were when they started working with you. So uh, again, uh, this all kind of all these variables kind of move together, and and as you treat people with this uh, uh, religious commitment to being there for them, uh, they're going to be there for you, and uh, that's a key way. So the virtual workers they, they need communication to be more direct, more transparent. So you can't manage by innuendo, by by snide comments. <laughs> you you, you got to be. And and if you ever you know aren't sure about it, just do a kind of I call it meta communicate. Talk about the communication as an issue. So you know I want to I want to give you some feedback. Uh, we haven't uh, worked together that long. I'm not sure how you'll take it. So I'm kind of hesitant to give you this feedback that I think would would make you a better employee. And, and you know nine, 99 out of 100 employees are gonna say no 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 I want to feed I want the feedback because I don't want to be surprised when I'm you fire me in two weeks because I, I didn't do something you expected because you never told me. So no, no, give me the feedback. Well, I think I think in meetings you'd be more you'd be more effective. For example, if you um, uh, took time to to think about what you wanted to say before you said it, you, you seem to kind of blurt everything out in the in the meeting. It's not even your meeting, and 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 uh, I think you're losing credibility by doing that. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes, that's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. <laughs> that you, I've, I've worked with a lot of millennials where they need to hear that because they 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 felt that they had all the answers and uh, they're going to tell whoever wherever what what we should be doing, what my manager should be doing, what the company should be doing, and um you know it's like well that's not going to go down that well and and you're going to lose effectiveness quickly. So uh, pick and choose, pick and choose where you contribute and 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 honor the fact that it's someone else's meeting as just one example. That may not be relevant for you, uh, but whatever it is, you got to have a way to give people feedback that they could use to make them better, to make the team more effective. Uh, now back to uh, work structure rules and expectations with with Jennifer. Uh, they they have uh, they, they set it up the big term. They have a, a daily process, and then within that, they have constant contact within the work group uh, using tools for uh, Slack, etc. Uh, the manager to team, uh, team to team member. Uh, and they do that through technical tools to keep in touch. And then they always have the option to have a non-standard meeting. They're already meeting every morning for 15 minutes, but if something comes up, they can pull a couple of people together, a non-standard meeting on a, a chat talk or something. And, and they, they all know that and they all use that. And sometimes they, they work with people in that kind of open mic where they can just talk just socially while they're working and, and getting stuff done. Uh, and that's good because you need that fluidity in getting the, the job done. What type of tools? There you go. Uh, there's there's tools for both a methodology and approaching work as well as technical tools for the work itself. So some of these on top, is um, uh, an engineering tool, Agile, uh, Scrum, uh, Kanban. These are these are approaches to work, a process for work, and then the the specific tools for the work itself. We're using one now on Zoom, whether it's this or Microsoft Teams or or GoToMeeting or, or WebEx, Google Hangouts. Uh, these are any of these are okay, um, and then tools for for connecting, uh, hip chat, uh, Slack. Uh, all, all these are fair game. Whatever can help you be more effective in connecting with each other, <coughs> uh, you need to explore and and get and get versed at. Um, this is the key to making virtual work uh, work well: is having the the tools for ready access. And and not not just one way access through email or voicemail or or but through two way access because uh, if it's just one way and you're dumping work on people and and trying to manage people by email does not work you know they, they try to read into it and and things are are, are communication is more likely to go south it, the, through a a limited uh, communication where you don't have visual cues. And, and whatnot. 90% of communication is is tends to be nonverbal um, and a tone of voice. So you got to use a technology that captures some of that. I had I used to have a sales manager. Whenever I'd send him an email, 
honest to God, he would show it to another employee and say, what does Bob mean by this? <laughs> I found out about that, I don't know, a week or months later ago. Tell him to come ask me what I mean by it. I'm not trying to, you know, play games here. I'm trying to, but, uh, you know, employees come from all perspectives and maybe they had a bad manager who, who, you know, got off kilter very easily. So it has short fuse. So they're very careful on what they, they brought back to, to uh, their, their manager. You got, and you just have to, you have to grope together to, to keep coming back to a better relationship and and to realize hey we're all going to make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes it's it's how you overcome the mistakes it's how you get up and and learn from that that is, is going to be key uh so use technology to make it happen again the big challenge of any of these technologies is that being outside now of mind so if you can use one where they're inside that that's gonna be all the better uh they uh overcoming the one-way communication and uh, as i mentioned the loss of contextual clues when Jennifer got this job in um, in Austin, um, they they did and and as we as we have go back to more of a hybrid environment where we have virtual and people back in the office, I think this is going to be more doable. Where they um, she wasn't going to we're not going to live in Austin. They got that we're going to be virtual, but they, they still invited her there for uh, it was like a week or two to to get to know the company and to get to know the people that were there in case she had a question and uh, and that's important. Because all all um, relationships are built on shared experiences, and you can't just start working with someone virtually and without getting to know them, and and uh, and and tapping and get, having them to get to know you and get to know the company and and what we're trying to do together. You can't skip that step uh, because otherwise it's it's going to uh, have a, a weaker connection with employees that have less buy-in. Um, so. Inclusion and collaboration is is an issue with virtual workers. They have, um, and and this has been uh, uh, here. I just said this. All relationships are built on shared experiences. So spend more time up front, orienting them, having having the team share information about themselves. Like Hyatt uh, does this uh, with their teams, and they have a they have a me board where people share information about themselves. They they do a little assessment about themselves and they post and share it with others about, you know, favorite hobbies, what they do on, on their off time. Do they have any pets? What's their favorite food, their favorite flower, that type of thing. And they, they have a, a strategy to help people get to know each other uh, and, and, to, and to keep coming back to that. Maybe a little bit more upfront or when someone's new, but um, again, to, to keep the human element in the, in the work so it's not just a, a constant grind. Uh, <clears throat> hold periodic team building activities again with in, in, the, in Scrum, uh, in the two week sprints, they tend to do that at the end of a two week sprint where we achieved our goals. And then they, they, they spend time uh, doing something fun. It could be a, a virtual game. It could be a virtual happy hour. It could be a combination of those. They, they, there's a lot, a lot of uh, fun things you can do virtually, and so, and and fun's part of a, part of the the workplace. If you want people, especially the younger generation, to be engaged, you got to make the work fun, and and uh, uh, that that allows me to do a, a quick plug for my book coming out in March, which is work that's fun gets done. <laughs> so I believe enough in it to say, hey, you know, really, this is a serious topic. And, and you've got to have an approach to tap into, into making everyone's job more fun, whether it's a, as an individual or, or team or as, as a company. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but, <laughs> um, and uh, and then, of course, like, like hopefully you're doing in the traditional job, one-on-ones to talk about people's career and any issues they have, you could still do these virtually and you need to do these virtually because you can't skip these things that we know are important to, to workers and to the success of, of them and the organization just because we're, we're virtual now. It's, you can't, you can't, uh, you gotta still tap into all those things that we know work and will work if you, if you haven't worked for you. So a one-on-one -on -one meeting to spend time to talk about someone, have it just be their agenda, about questions they have, about what uh, interests, what they might do next in the, in the company what they'd like to learn, where do they like to be five years from now? That's a very important conversation for any employee. And you need to systematically do that as, as their leader to hold on to their, uh, their full commitment and energy going forward. Um, so inclusion uh, in the virtual work, 
workplace is, is done through visibility of, of how often people are, are seen. Uh, there's a positive correlation between how often people are seen and, and how much perceived care that they're receiving. Okay, what this means is like if, if an employee has a question and you, as I, you don't get back to them, you know, in a prompt way, then um, I mean, initially they're, if that happens once, you know, they're, they're kind of surprised by that, but then it happened again and again, and all of a sudden they're gonna feel like, well, I guess the role I'm doing isn't that important or I'm not that important to my manager. And then they start acting in that, in that uh, value that you instilled in them. And then they start acting like their work's not important. And then it's okay if it's a little late or isn't up to their best, you know, and, and uh, because you didn't indicate that they were important and the work that they're doing is important on an ongoing basis. This is what we need from our leaders. So own up to it if you're, if you're not doing that and it's never too late to fix it. Uh, and, and so you want to have this active presence at all times by taking the initiative to return emails and phone calls as you can from your immediate uh, direct reports. And, and some companies go, go so far, and I think everyone should do this, have a standard for response time. And I'll just give you one. You can adjust this depending on your industry. Um, uh, three, hour, three business hours for external requests, uh, some companies use. And if it's a internal, uh, if it's a uh, one business day for internal request. Uh, so again, in this case, external request is from a customer. And again, depending on the company, you know, some companies might do might have a, a 10 minute uh, threshold for we get back to the the customer who's on hold kind of thing, you know, um, and then maybe a, a little bit longer for for uh, internal requests from an, uh, a, a colleague or someone in a different department. Then this is just one standard. You got to pick the standard that works for you. But but if you leave this unstated in a virtual environment, people are going to bring their own standard to it, and that's going to be all over the map. And then, and then when you're 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 waiting for that that report from an employee, and they and and they get it to you, you know, two days after you thought you'd had it, and they thought it's on time, and you're going, I expected this two days ago, and they're going, well, you never said, you never gave me that day as a deadline, you never asked when do you think you could have this done, so I got to it as I got to it, and darn, now we're out out of sync because our expectations were aligned. So again, that fall, falls to the manager. If that happens once, then you, you correct it to say, my bad, uh, I'll, I'll just be clear going forward when, when there's assignment to always talk about uh, when, when the expected due date is or when do you think that could be done and let me know if, if you need more time, that type of thing. Part of the, the relationship of, of ongoing communications. And the, and the last point uh, here, uh, that again, uh, virtual recognition rewards, all, you know, all, all work, all work is, is a function. I, I, you know, I did my doctoral work on the importance of employee recognition. And, and I found that uh, no matter what you're trying to get from others, if you don't recognize the things you're trying to get, or you don't, you don't thank them when they do a good job, you will not continue to get good work from them. So uh, and the book initially did that with a, a thousand one ways to reward employees, uh, which is in its 64th printing now and it sold a couple million copies. So it kind of hit a nerve out there. There's a lot of people that don't feel recognized, I assure you. And it's easier to feel unrecognized when you're sitting at home by yourself with your cat and your kids doing their homework and your spouse is on the other end of the kitchen table trying to work as well. You're, you're, it's kind of maddening. And so you need to hear that, hey, that was a great job you did yesterday. Way to handle that. You need to hear that. And you need to hear it from the person you're working from. Uh, there's no excuses not to do this. So you got to take time to systematically reach out to people. And ideally in ways that you know that they value. Okay. Because that's all over the map as well. So instead of guessing, if you can get more insight into them and, and what things that they most appreciate, then you can you can uh, thank them in ways that are most meaningful to them and have them uh, you know full force and uh, for you for the next assignment. Uh, so the greatest management principle in the world I've, I learned in my my PhD studies is you, you get what you reward, what you notice, what you inspect, uh, uh, what you focus on, what you measure, you will get more of, hands down, guaranteed. Okay, and and uh, so when you get serious about performance of any type. You have to get serious about recognition, and this is this is a. And it sounds like common sense, but it's not. I assure you, it's not common practice in in all the the companies I've worked with, and 
and we tend to you know say yeah we know what the the financial goals are we know what the uh, what we're serious about but the recognition is uh some is on something else and this just drives me nuts because it's like okay we've got our strategic objectives all hands on deck we gotta make this happen and then what's the company recognizing years of service birthdays holiday parties and it's like what this is the most powerful form of management known to mankind to systematically recognize the things that you want more of and you're wasting that on freaking birthdays that's not managing performance that's managing presence um or years of service it's a freaking joke 92.5 percent of employees have years of service awards i've never met an employee that stays a day longer in their job to get their 10-year pin you know that in fact if you only if you only reinforce and recognize people for presence, you end up creating a culture of entitlement. Where what, to, what more are you gonna do for me? Come on, keep it coming. Uh, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, my engagement's kind of low. You need to do something else to make me feel engaged. It's like, get over that. You gotta focus on performance. Pe people that feel great about the job they did wanna do more of it and they wanna do more of it for you. So this is a this is a, a key goal and rule, and it's it's double down uh, important uh, when it comes to uh, virtual workers. So, uh, hey, uh, Bob, yes. um, you must have hit quite. Um, I mean, I understand why your books are so just extraordinarily successful. There's a question around this. Can we just ask? I know we've got some Q and A at the end, but I think this question is too good not to ask. Okay, from Stella. She says, I work with a team that is very diversified age-wise, meaning people at different stages in their lives and their careers. So this is to the point you just made. This causes a lot of miscommunication and tension. We just, we tried several approaches, getting to know team meetings and hobbies, interests, et cetera. Can you give me a recommendation of some ways to alleviate that tension? Sure. I, I work with companies, for example, like you look at the four generations in the workplace today, and the, and the largest generation is the millennials, well, they, they come to work very differently, different expectations, different values. And so I know some companies that they have, they have meetings just to talk about that. And they'll, they'll get together with millennials and they say, hey, this is, a, I'm, I'm a baby boomer, and I, I want to I want to just ask some questions because I don't I don't understand you know you know I, I grew up with uh, you know the boss is a boss and and they've got the you know you do what they say and and uh, that that doesn't seem to be uh, the priority for millennials and they have, yeah you're you're right it's a, I'm driving my own boat here and I'm concerned about my own future and and uh, unless you show some concern about me and helping me get where I want to. I'm not going to show much concern about you and your goals for the organization. I just to be honest with you. So, uh, you know, so what would what could, what could we do to improve that? And it might be say, well, I'd love to have you know we we used to say uh, you know so to talk about the situation. Don't talk about millennials behind their back or in the lunchroom. Talk to them. Uh, and I learned from uh, from Ken Blanchard. I worked for him for 10 years that the best management is what you do with people, not what you do to people. So bring them into the conversation and say, you know, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, you know you're you're wearing those uh, those ear ear pads and it, it makes me feel like you're not focused on work because you're listening to music and and bring that up if it if it bothers you. And, you, and the typical millennial will say, oh, these, I don't, I don't need to wear these. If it bothers you, I won't wear them. <laughs> Problem solved. You know, or, and so it, you, you're going to find that as you expose the issues that are a rub for you, you're going to find a blind spot for them that's now is no longer blind, or you're going to find them adjusting because they want to they work out. And, and then, by the way, what, what concerns do you have and how can I be a better boss for you? Wow. But how often do we ask that one? You know? <laughs> It's sort of like uh, I'm I'm here to help you, and then uh, and and uh, I've got some uh, ideas for how you can help me. But it's a two-way street here, so so come back to things like that. It sounds like the other things you're doing to to get to know each other. Um, I think is important because people you know what motivates people does vary widely, and so someone might want a, a tougher, uh, more responsibility. Someone else wants more flexibility in their schedule. So there's not a, a right and a wrong answer. It's just different. And so the more you can accommodate uh, meeting people where their motivation is, 
the more motivated the person will be. Uh, and and I've got you know thousands of uh, of examples, so please check out any, any of my books in that regard. But I, the most the most powerful ones tend to be the ones that don't cost any money at all, starting with personal praise and, and public praise. And this I got from from research. I mentioned those 52 different behaviors. Of, of those, I, I, I factored them into 12 dimensions. Four of the 12 dimensions, the top motivators for employees had to do with record, specifically with, with thanks and praise, personal praise, written praise, electronic praise, and public praise. Now, initially I saw this, I go, wow, the praise, isn't this one bucket? This is four buckets? I, and, and what I've learned is that even the way you thank people, uh, there's variance in it. And you've got to be firing on different cylinders to maximize the power of thanking someone, as simple as that is. And so, uh, for example, I, I would, uh, I personally, I like to think I was good at, at uh, personally thanking people. But I got, I learned from working with, with people that, you know, actually they wanted public praise too. They wanted me to speak up and talk about the success of our department and who on the team made it happen to other people in, in, in a staff meeting or all hands meeting. And, and I, I, I didn't do much of that. And I, I learned to do more of it because I knew my people wanted it and they valued it. And so you got to fire on every cylinder to uh, maximize the recognition. 80% of employees feel overworked and under-recognized. 80%. Okay, so we got we got to switch that around so 80% feel validated, and 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 uh, feel special for for working for you and for doing the work they're doing for the company. You want that. You want them to feel special because they'll, that will determine how hard they hit the next assignment, and if they even show up for the next, uh, you know, if they're even with you two weeks from now. Uh, again, this is just a starting list for for uh, the, the most powerful things are no cost. And a lot of people don't want to hear this because the incentive industry is a is a um, you know billion dollar industry and, and gift cards and and trips and all all whatnot and I, I I alienate a lot of them when I say hey you don't have to have a lot of money to to do recognition well now now if you do it at this level where it's free you can always add in something that costs money a points or a gift cards and stuff but that's not where it starts it starts with the behavior. It starts with a personal thank you for a job well done in a timely, specific, meaningful way. Um, and, and other things like that that are, that are no cost. So a personal praise, a, a uh, giving someone the tools to do the job, uh, two-way communication. Uh, if they uh, make a mistake, uh, you, can, you can criticize them for, for that mistake, or you can take a step and a breath and say, you know, I wouldn't have done it the same way, but what'd you learn from that? And, and the way you handle mistakes uh, in a positive way where they can grow from it is a very powerful strategy that uh, I know Bill Gates uh, once said, I could, you could tell a lot about the, the long-term viability of any organization simply by looking at how they handle mistakes. Because <laughs> if, you, if you hammer someone and you crush their spirit and they embarrass them in front of their peers, yeah, you know, you're going to lose what they bring to the next assignment <laughs> because they hate you now <laughs> and they're and they're already looking for a new job. So uh, don't let that happen. So uh, last, uh, let me wrap up this point uh, so we can get to a little Q and A. <clears throat> Guidelines for virtual recognition are, then are uh, ad taking time to identify uh, what the motivators are. So if you have a and we all have a, a mixed group and and different ages and different cultures and. Uh, mixed of a hybrid. We're, we're going to a hybrid of some people are in the office and some people are virtual. So within all that, find out what, what motivators are for each person is a, is a very specific task that you can and should do. And that could be just asking them. It could be asking them as a team. It could be uh, giving them an assessment where you get more insight into what they value and then using that information. You got to do at least what you're doing for the people that are in the office, for the people that aren't there, because they already feel out of sight, out of mind. OK, we got we got to make sure that you all feel the same. And, and then we're possible with everyone. If you can, you know, going forward, uh, you want to make sure you still have some face to face recognition in there where we're possible. And, and time will tell we'll see if that if that's a reality. Let me give you a few other ideas. Having call out and even on on a Zoom call, having uh, call outs and meetings electronic thank you cards. Praise Barrage is a, is a lovely tool. I love this. I learned this from the city of uh, San Diego, a good friend that was on the management team there. They would, they would occasionally say, hey, time for a Praise Barrage. And what that means is we're going to go around our team right now, right here, right now, take 10 minutes. And as I point to somebody, 
I want everyone to say what they most value about working with John. Let's start with John. Okay, 100% positive. Always there for you when you need him, uh, creative. Okay, now Mary, a great summarizer and, and whip around the team and we're done. I tell you what, you call out uh, among a team what people value in, in working with each other. Whatever it was you called out, you can get more of. So the person that was good at that is now going to be great at that. You know, and and you can do this in person, and you can do it with index cards, but you can do it in a Zoom call too. Hey, let's start off with a, a praise barrage. I'm just going to go around the room, 100% positive. We're not going to bring up criticisms, and we're going to catch you if you start to say something negative. 100% positive. What what do you most what do you most value about working with this team? What do you most value about about the the goal that we have? But most important, what do you most value about the the people that we're working with? Uh, having a praise buddy, this is something Hyatt does as well, where they assign uh, one person to specifically be a praise buddy for someone else to look out for catching that person doing things right and to and to bring it to to bear, kind of like a secret Santa, but around around uh, thanks and praise. Having a applause, electronic, and, and there's a lot of this now going forward. Uh, electronic uh, billboards and and um, uh, software. Uh, so check with me if you have any interest in that, because I know everyone that does does these things. Uh, simultaneous celebrations. I I have uh, I know a company that they said hey had had have employees around the world. And they say hey, four four p.m. on Friday wherever you are. I want you to stop at your workstation and applaud for this goal that we just reached as a company. Yeah, all the people working by themselves applauding, you know, it's like, it's just a goof, but it's kind of fun, you know, and, and again, uh, silly, but fun, but, but meaningful. Uh, and then again, uh, as for a manager, keep a recognition log for your remote employees because they're out of sight, out of mind. And you might, you, you know, most managers end up, they recognize the same people time and time again, whoever they have the most contact with. So in the office, it's the person, it's your, your assistant or whatnot, or the person that's sitting, you know, in the same office or, or close by. Uh, if you're virtual, you're in an outpost. You got to have more intentionality to reach out to them, to see how's it going. And to, hey, I saw what you did here. That was a great job. And to, and to broadcast that to them and to, and to others in the organization. Uh, and so that's what I wanted to cover in our, our brief time. I, I wanted to uh, end with this question on, uh, again, how can we best engage workers from a distance? And, and one of the things that I'm so excited about uh, Harris, Harrison Assessments is that uh, they have uh, this powerful tool to give you insight into your workers and to give you, and, and to, you know, I said, you can ask people questions and you get some, some stuff, but you can find out stuff about them that they didn't know about themselves and bring that to bear to have, to, to have a more meaningful work relationship with them and, and uh, to bring them along. And, and with that, uh, I, I wanna hand it over here to Tracy, who who's, has expertise with this assessment. Thanks, Bob. Uh, well, what I'd like to say is that we at Harrison have a unique perspective that is aligned with Bob around uh, work being a state of mind. And typically, if you look at what most companies measure with their engagement, it's the intrinsic, these factors on the right, uh, factors like policy, benefits, et cetera. They're important, but they don't tell the whole story. The other half of the equation are the intrinsic factors, those key motivations, factors that are important to the individual employee. So when we talk about work as a state of mind and Bob talking about the Harrison assessment, we're able to give you access to that. And to his point, ways you wouldn't have been able to find it without having someone take the assessment. And so if you look at engagement surveys, they're typically collected anonymously for good reason. You want candid feedback and you are reacting typically at the group level. And if you're really trying to impact engagement at the group level, you can have small impact, but where engagement really happens is to Bob's entire presentation here is when you engage with another person by looking at their specific engagement factors and identifying what is important to them and rewarding and motivating them uniquely. And if you all put right. it all together, right, what we have here is the engagement analytics where you can look at each individual and here are the various factors that are important, which is what we measure. Uh, of what, in, what would engage an individual. 
And these are the metrics that you would look at. And so the mistake is to really have a one size fits all approach. What you want to do is look here, if you like to the left at each of the individuals and see what is important. So you, what you can see here is that Annie really wants her opinion valued, but she has a low level of fulfillment on that. And our time is ending here. We're getting the note. So if you are interested in the Harrison, we're going to give access for folks to take a look at it, as well as a book, The Virtual Worker. Bob? I've, I've been incredibly impressed with the Harrison assessment. And of course, you, you're just uh, you know scratching the surface of what's there. But again, uh, unbelievable insight into your workers to help overcome the fact that they're not sitting next to you. You can't take them out to lunch. you know. Uh, and you can use that impact and work together. And with and with that, <laughs> oh boy! So uh, everyone gets a copy of the Virtual Manager. It's by by my friend and colleague uh, Kevin Sheridan. And then of course, I want to give you one of my books. This is my latest, a Thousand One Ways to Engage Employees. So if you get us, uh, um, if you get us your your uh, best mailing address, we'll get those in the mail to you. And I think I think uh, Harrison Assessments is actually going to be uh, to be coming from them. And with that. Uh, uh, we, we are out of time, but if you have a, a question, please email us and we will get back to you. Um, the nature of these is that we often don't have much time for questions, but uh, we are we are committed to helping you in whatever you need on, on this topic. So please take advantage of that. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope to see you at, at uh, one of the round tables coming up. On behalf of HR.com, I'd like to give a very big thank you to Harrison Assessments, Dr. Bob Nelson and Tracy Wick for sharing this valuable information with us. Also uh, to extend an invitation to the roundtable at one o'clock um, where you can continue the conversation.